right. And I believe we are live. Hello. Hi, Tammy Hahnemann. Well, hello, Miss Sarah. It is an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. Um, guys, this is Tammy Hahnemann. Tammy is a longtime friend. She has been in the industry, in the beauty industry for a long time. And I have to say, Tammy, that you have got to be one of the most dedicated women and designers and forces this beating industry has to offer. Thank you so much for coming and taking time from your day to hang out with myself and all of us here at Jesse James Beads. Well, Sarah, it is a true honor to be here with you and with everybody at Jesse James Beads. And you have all been such a, a great support and force in the world as well. And really, I'm, I'm honored to be with you here today and to call you a friend. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so Tammy and I were just talking before um, before we we went live on Facebook about how we how much we miss Tucson. And there was this one there was one time in Tucson that we just happened upon each other at dinner. She and Wyatt White from Beatalon and Sandra Lupo were finishing dinner. I was with my family and we were finishing dinner. And they invited me over to their table and we just sat there and we closed that place down, Tammy. That was like one that's just, that goes down in my Tucson memory book till the end of time absolutely it was just so genuine so real so natural and it was a blast we had so much fun and we didn't even drink too much wine to have to get to that really we had a good time <laughs> yeah, we really did. We were just like giggling. And it's really, really nice to be able to come together with like-minded people from this industry, from this creative space, and be able to catch up on real life um, and talk about the industry, talk about dreams and goals and just kind of level, you know? Yep. It really is. It really is. And and that is what Tucson's all about, honestly. You know, it's about the shows, seeing stuff, finding out the trends, but being together and being with each other and sharing our hearts and our passion with each other because that is what what we all have in common it's it's really so very very true yeah. um so for everyone that's tuning in tammy fill us in a little bit you do so much in this jewelry making industry and i just love watching where you go and how that shines light on on what we all love and that is this beating industry and community tell us what are you up to right now well um, I am so fortunate to have joined the publishing industry, oh, so long ago now that I'm old. <laughs> um, and <Nah>. really, <laughs> it's like the longer I've been here, the older I get, but it's okay. Um, it's a wonderful world and it's a wonderful life. Um, I, fortunate, just happenstance, wound up in publishing, wound up as an editor for Lapidary Journal and have worked alongside Merle in many different capacities and have kind of gone around, uh, worked with different companies, have done so many different things. My true passion, um, outside of now being a part of the Interweave company, uh, you know, Golden Peak Media uh, owns Interweave is where I am the director of content. And right now I am um, over the yarn group, the bead and jewelry group, and in there is such a dynamic, group of people that I'm so blessed to work with every day. I mean, the talent that oozes out of those walls is just amazing. And, and even though we're all remote, the amount of energy that everybody brings to the table each day, it's, it's infectious, you know, like it kind of drives you and it, 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 it they, they all, we all force each other to be our best selves every day. Um, so I'm truly blessed to have that opportunity, but my, I think my other passion and what I really love is sharing and sharing education and information. It is what drives me. It is what has um, propelled me to continue doing what I do and in whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, you know, if, even from teaching my kids to have, how to bake cookies to helping people turn their first water loop, like whatever it is, it is what drives me to continue doing what I do. Um, and to continue learning and pushing myself to be better at what I do so I can push other people to also be better and achieve their goals. You know, really, everybody has a different dream and a different objective. And um, I, I truly am so blessed to have been able to be a part of many people's journeys and to, you know, help them be able to do what they want to do. Tammy, this is just hearing these words come from your mouth just sounds so genuine and so real. And I was talking to Meredith. Uh, Meredith Roddy two weeks ago and she I was telling her that we were doing this show today and she was like that is such a treat that Tammy's coming on Jesse James Beads and Meredith said that Tammy is one of the kindest people that she has ever met 
And I, I, I couldn't agree with her more. The, the, what you're saying about your passion for sharing and education and lifting people up to help them become their higher self. And that allows you to feel your highest self. That is really, really beautiful and very genuine. So I just, I'm just happy to be in your presence today, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't, I don't recognize that in myself. I just do um, for others because that's what I feel like I'm here to be doing. Um, you know, it's how I was raised and it's what is what really, truly, you know, get me emotional. It's really, truly what drives me to be <laughs> who I am. You know, it is, it is, it is what I do. And I, I, every day is a blessing. And if I can bless somebody's life with life with something today or tomorrow, um, I'm here to do it. So thank you. And I love Meredith. We have, we've had some great travel times together too. <laughs> You know, it's it's this it's this sort of attitude. It's this sort of positivity that is so infectious, and our world needs more of this right now. Like you said, your entire team has been working remote, but it's been the the ability to share content and the the ability to be able to see people's designs and share them with other people that has kept you going. And that's that's the way I feel like all of us have been feeling online in this in this creative community. Completely, completely. And I have to say shout out to all of our contributors because without them, we couldn't do what we do. And for all of us who are creative and maybe didn't have our mojo over the last year to be doing so many good things, there were contributors sending us the most amazing work. And we are so fortunate to have such a community around us to be able to then share their work with our subscribers and with our readers, both digitally and in print. And without our contributors, you know, where would we be? And the talent that is in our community uh, is, is, it is infectious and it's just so compelling to, to see all the work everybody is doing and to read their words. Everybody shares their words in such a way. Um, and our team of course helps them have their words be in the right order and all of that. But it, you know, as what do we say, it takes a village and we just happen to be among an amazing village of people. So now when you say contributors, do you mean designers and people amongst our community that are creating jewelry and, and contributing for content that's on beatingdaily.com and beating daily healer here on Facebook and also in print? Yes, 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 yes. So people, you know, they offer their contributions to us to have an opportunity to publish their work, um, both in print, and then we carry some of that over to you know, our digital patterns that are for sale in our store, as well as then we, we highlight them in on beatingdaily.com. Yeah. That's awesome. So guys, yeah. for, whoever, for, whoever's, for whoever's tuning in now, you can be a contributor for Beating Daily and for Interweave the same way that you can also contribute with Jesse James Bead's Rising Star Premiere, which we do every Monday at 4 p.m. So if you're a designer and you're interested in having your work published or taking a stab at some video content, please do reach out to Jesse James Beads and also reach out to Tammy because there's opportunities here to share your light and your creativity with this community. We can all play in the sandbox and have a really, really great time and learn from each other. So that's like, I'm yep. all about it. We, and we've got a beautiful sandbox to play in with beautiful things yeah. to play with, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that is, that is <laughs> for sure. Guys, so T Tammy and I talked about this project probably like all the way back in the beginning of January. And she sent me a picture of this design that she had in mind to teach us today. Um, Tammy, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be learning with these tools that you have on your very beautiful beady sandbox in front of you right now. Yes. Yes, and a, and a separate sandbox that you can't see in my camera here. Um, but we are working on, and I just kind of put this one together using some Jesse James beads. So it's a little bit different from, uh, let's see, I figure it's all backwards. Um, the base of this bracelet is the part that I'm happy to share with you because once you have the base of this bracelet done, you can do so many things that will inspire you to want to make more of these. And I'm telling you, when I first started working on these, um, it's, a, it's a design that I learned from Lapidary Journal, one of our magazines, and one of our contributors, Connie Fox, she was making these bracelets and she taught this in print and she gave me permission to continue um, pushing the boundaries on this design. And it has really been something that one for me was a great seller when I was selling my jewelry retail. Um, and it's also been a, a something that I enjoy teaching people. And what they're on, what I've added them to is a base bracelet, which I am so glad to be able to share. I learned this from Connie Fox, one of the contributors to Lapidary Journal. And she taught this design in our magazine years and years ago. And I said, Connie, I love this design. Are you okay if I teach it at Beadfest? And she's like, oh, yes, please, please go right ahead. 
you know, she, she is such a giving kind soul and really gave me the license to be able to perpetuate some of um, what she was doing. And I've, you know, have many iterations of this design and I'm happy to share with you the basic idea of how these come together. So you two can make a charm bracelet that you can then embellish. And really, I'm telling you, these things have been so um, important to me as far as things that I can wear. I make one in every color, every type of wire, all sorts of colors of beads, um, different holidays. I have some other designs here. Um, you can see like this is all Halloween. So you just find, you know, you just find kind of what's in your heart and wear it on your sleeve or your wrist. Um, and we'll just get right to, to making this shape, which is really all you need to know. And then you just link it together and put a clasp on it and you are out the door with some really fun stuff. You know, right, and so one, our, thing, yeah. one thing we really love at Jesse James Beads is learning how to make different components because when you can make your own components, your wire always matches. So when you're taking yes. your wire and, and creating your own links, you it's it's like you're making your own chain for this bracelet. I'm I'm so excited to be able to share this technique with our yes. crew. I mean, and you can even make it into a necklace. You don't have to stop at a bracelet. Wow. So yes, it it, it and it it, it other pink one like my point is so spot on you can make it all so the wire matches so your color is the same throughout so i've made on this design i made the links i used um, beetleon's flat wire to make my connection here like a jump ring which i'll show you i made the jump rings wow. and i made the clasp all from the same wire so it matches you know, you're not mixing and matching from other things. Now, my head pins are a little bit different. They're, I did not make those, but you could, right? You could, but I didn't. These are also beetle on. So they all match, which is lovely. All and right, I so really, really love that we're playing with super, super thick wire. Like, I feel like when you yes. get your hands on thick wire, it's very empowering. Oh, to, to yes. Make yes, exactly like that, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> show us how it's done. All right. Now it does take some hand strength. So be kind to yourself if this is somewhat new to you um, and you do wanna have good tools. All right, so we're gonna just do straight up basic, no hammering. But if you were to hammer, you'd reduce your, your length just a little because we'd be hammering the ends. That makes the wire a little longer. All right, too much talking, too much coffee. Three and a half inches, one cut. So that each side has a straight cut. Now, as I was saying, if you were to hammer this, it would lengthen your wire. So you can do that. And it's a beautiful, tr beautiful treatment, but it will make your wire longer. And the key to this design is really knowing your tools and getting the measurements right from the beginning. So again, be kind to yourself because you may not be happy with the first couple that you make. All right, back to straight up, three and a half inches, blunt cut both ends. I'm gonna take the bail making pliers and use the smaller side. I have my wire very flush in the pliers so it's not sticking out, but it's, yet it's right up against there. I'm gonna, now this is also important. This is where you will find um, you will need strength, but if you use your hands correctly, it won't be as difficult if you hold your hands in the right position. Tammy, real I'll quick, you. you cut yeah. out just a second before. Is the wire three and a half inches? Is that what you said? Yes, three and a half. Three and a half inches with flush cuts on both sides. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry, is my internet giving us the trouble here? Okay, so the wire. One. You're fine now. Okay. Uh, the wire is flush in my pliers, and I'm just going to rotate my wrist away from me. And that's a very important movement. You don't want to be working your wrist toward you. It's just not good for your joints. And what I'm going to do is place my thumb right up against the wire and the tool. And I'm going to use that pressure to help rotate and turn that loop. And Tammy, what gauge wire is this? Thank you for saying that, for asking. It's 14 gauge. 
14 gauge. 14 gauge. You can do this in lighter gauge, but I really like the, the strength that a 14 gauge gives a finished design. It also yeah. makes it so it's a little bit, it's a little sturdier and holds up better when you're wearing it. So I like 14 gauge. And you probably okay. don't have to work hard in 14 gauge like you would have to work hard in your 18 or something Correct. that's a thinner wire. Correct. Correct. Now you can hammer and I do like to hammer. I think it adds a nice touch, but you don't have to. And with this, with 14 gauge, you do not have to. Got it. Okay. So now I have the loop coming up toward me and I'm going to do the same exact motion where I have the wire flush in my pliers. I'm going to place my thumb right up against the barrel and rotate my me. And so you have a design here. I should probably get a clean mat so you don't have all this behind me. Perfect. So you have a component with two loops, each facing a different direction. And now the magic. And this is something that as I teach this, it definitely is a little confusing, but once you get it, you get it. So again, I have the loop. Let's see. It's coming up toward me. And I have the larger size of the pliers on the other side away from me. And I'm going to place my thumb right up against the barrel. I'm going to use that to help give me some leverage and rotate my wrist away from me. And now you have your first loop. Ah, beautiful. Right? So now, now I saw that you just switched from the small making small bill making yeah. pliers to the large bill making pliers. Yes, ma'am. Would you be able to do this technique with the stepped up bail making pliers? Yes. Ah, oh, wow. Such a fancy tool. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is that you need to keep in mind, because um, you could even just use regular round nose pliers for this. Okay. Every time you change your tools, you change the amount of wire that each piece, each shape takes. So that's where the length becomes changeable. Like for three and a half, it works for these tools. Sometimes if I use different tools, it's three and a quarter. Sometimes it's longer. It all depends on the tools you're using and how large you make the shape. You know, sometimes people will make the shape and they'll kind of keep going a little bit too, too far around and that's okay, but it uses up more wire. So then your shapes come out a little bit wonky. It's okay. Um, okay. So now I have the, the loop is coming up toward me. I'm gonna put it into the pliers. Again, it's right up against the barrels. And I'm gonna just rotate it away. And then I have my S. Beautiful. And now here, I'll bring in, hopefully it's not too much glare. So you, I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's not flat. So you can just for just for um, actually let me get a rawhide mallet um, just to get it flattened without making any marks. Or hammer just to kind of flatten it down. That's the beauty of working with wire. Like some people, unfortunately, they think like, okay, well, when it doesn't work out right from when you finished, oh, I did it wrong. You still can you still can move it and you can still change it and sometimes um like you'll wind up with the loops on both sides well then you just twist the wire and then the loops have magically on the other side it's really okay <laughs> it's very forgiving <laughs> um and then obviously you can since i've got the block here you could really do a nice little finish treatment there on the side oh yeah, let's see that up close. Did you just texturize it? Just kind of flattened it. Let's see. Just flattened. Like little... Wow, that is so nice. And it's so professional looking. Right. The and why it really does a nice job for it. Yeah. We did it. We did it together. Like nothing fancy. You guys have these tools probably at home where you can go easily get them. There's nothing fancy about it, but it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Um so, and with me saying that things get a little wonky, I wanted to share with you something that came out of a out of a workshop one time when people were really unhappy 
with how their shapes were coming out and how they were wrong and how they were backwards. Well, then, so just make a bunch of those and put them together and make a different type of charm bracelet, right? There's nothing really bad about it. I love it. Okay. So. And I love your attitude with it too, which is just, you know, sometimes things aren't perfect on your first go about. So don't give up and try again. And there's always, there's often beauty in this beauty in the imperfections as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of the best designs come from mistakes or what you think are mistakes. And I used to teach this with copper because copper was so much more affordable. What I would recommend is find a really inexpensive wire and practice. If this is something that's a little intimidating, just practice with something that's not going to make it you anxious about spending too much money and having to, you know, have it not work out. Like just, just take it, take your time and, and do what makes you feel most comfortable and eliminate whatever is causing you any of that anxiety. All right, let me get this guy out of here. Although that's a really good backdrop for <laughs> for making things. Okay, so we have our our shape. We've got a few shapes. Um, and when I'm linking them together, I do like them to be facing the same direction. I don't know if you really have to. I just, that is, um, I think in design, it's good to have things that could be a little bit off and different, but at some point you do have to have some consistency or it's just a hot mess. <laughs> so I do put things in the same order. And you can make any kind of jump rings you want. I happen to have some flat wire around and it is, I think this is three millimeter flat I love wire. Flat wire. Oh my gosh, don't you? I just love it. Yeah. It's so fun. And I have wide somewhere. It's probably just, just out of reach right over there. Yep, here's the here's the wider version. And this is in the rose gold, which oh my gosh, isn't it so pretty? Yes, it's gorgeous. It really is. I'm a fan of gold just to begin with. And then you add a splash of pink to it. And I just can't. Oh. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. All right. So these fail making pliers, which I love um, because they, so what I love about these pliers, let me, let me mention this to you. And if you've talked to Wyatt or what, Meredith, you probably already know all of this. But one thing that I like to explain to people is the box joint. You know, this is something that's going to make it so that you can have more help with your hand strength. This is going to help you be able to move the material better than if you were using a plier with, um, you know, like just a regular joint, you know, something that we're a little more familiar with. Like there's a little bit more that you have to do to get things to happen where these tools are manufactured, where this is really also a benefit to you and your hands and all of the work we're doing. It helps alleviate some of that strain. So I do like to use them. Wow, I had no idea about that. Matter, we're, we're making jump rings. Oh, oh, well, then I'm glad I shared that. Um, yeah, it's yeah. It, it's it makes such a difference, and it is you know the step pliers too. You know, and that's really what makes it um, just so great to use, especially when you're using heavier gauge wire. Um, okay, so we're going to make some jump rings, and you can do this in a in a couple of different ways. Well, in two different ways. <laughs> so a couple. Uh, I'm going to just make sure this end is flush. And when you say you make sure the end is flush, Tammy, what are you doing there? So when you have your cutters, one side is flat, mo most cutters. And then this side has like the inset here, this kind of groove. Let's see, can you catch that light? Yep, absolutely, I see it. Mm -hmm. So when you cut the wire, if I were to cut it this way, you may not notice it as much. If I cut it this way, you could see that little bit of flash. And that's um, the the wire has been pinched, so it's a little pointy. It's not it's not going to be smooth. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I put the flat side of the cutter against the wire and just trim off that little bit of extra. And now it's flat. Nice, nice. And it'll give flat. me a nice. Yep, it'll give me that nice joint when the two ends come together. And so again, I'm going to make it so that the end of the wire is nice and flat inside the barrel. I'll rotate away. Just a little over rotate there. Got like a little, little loop cut. And again, I'm going to use the flat side on the side that is staying 
as part of my component and the point pinch side will be on the other side. Some people say garbage in, garbage out or something. I can never remember. It's like, I'm not good with my left and right. So I just remember the black side is toward the good side. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna round that a little bit more. And so now I have a jump ring and I can open it and link the components together, which I'll show you. And we, I open these the same way. You know, flat wire is a little bit different, obviously, than working with round wire. Oops, got a few of them. But I still like to manipulate the same way I would open a regular jump ring. You just don't want to crush the flat wire. So I'll just turn that away from me. One, one away, one toward me. And oops, link two of these guys together and close. Now when you're closing, it's good to bring the ends a little closer together than they started. Can you see that okay? And it, to me, it's a little bit of a teardrop. So I'll come in and just, I'll use the, um, the mandrel of the plier, like a mandrel and use it as a forming tool to help shape that cut end so it's a little bit rounder. And you could fuss with that. The other thing that's nice too is it almost makes it where it's an oval. And with an oval, when you have, like if you, so for oval jump rings, you may know this already. So for oval jump rings, let's see, I'll try to do an oval. Gravity is going to pull so that your charm would sit down here and then the, the seam will be up here. So it will be less likely to open where with a round jump ring, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit easier to open. So yeah, when this crew when, loves, loves oval jump rings. That is something yeah. that we've just been learning about this year or I, I've just been learning about this year and how the gravity allows for the, for better protection for your jump ring not to open in your piece. Yep, exactly. So, all right, so you get the point on linking them together. And I just think the flat wire is just so, here, let me put on the purple. I think that did a really nice job. The flat wire is just so pretty. And I think also just adds a nice, uh, another level of a professional finish. And it's also to me, something very different than a regular standard jump ring. And I think a little stronger. So I'm, I'm all about that. Um, okay, so then you would link your, your S's together and to add the charm, we, I like to use a loop just because I feel like that gives you another closed component, closed element. So we'll just do a, a wrapped loop to decorate and add the charms. So here, Push. Everybody does these a little bit different. I know. I was just going to say, everyone does their wrap loop a little bit different. So Tammy, show us how you do your wrap loop. <laughs> it's so true. And why it always gives me a hard time. He's like, oh my I gosh. Love it. I, I love how everyone does it different. And everyone you back at home, you might do yours different. It's all about finding the flow that works for you. There's no right or wrong with this, but it's great to learn all different techniques from different great designers in the industry. So Tammy, Take it away with the wire wrap loop. <laughs> it is so true. It is so true. Everybody's very different. All right. So I've just put my pliers. I, I kind of eye it um, just over time. You kind of know where on the pliers you want to have the wire. So I'll put the pliers right up against the component. And then that gives me the space for my loop. Okay. For my, for my wraps. I'm going to rotate the pliers up. And I didn't move them. I just just turn them so now they're, let's see, can you, so now they are in a position where I can pull the wire over. Can you see that? Yes. There you go. And now I'll rotate the pliers again, but just a quarter turn. I'll pull the, the leg of the wire behind. Uh, yep. The right ankle. Okay. And then that's, that's it. 
now I take my pliers out. That's the first time I remove my pliers. Otherwise, everything has been kind of maintained all in one space. And what I would normally do, in fact, I'll just do it because you can see it takes a little bit of a, um, a little finesse. I'll add it to the S. So I opened it up just a tiny little bit to slip it on. And now I will close it back down. Okay. And now this is where I really like a bent chain nose. So this is something else if people are, are, are newer to, to making wrapped loops. I'll show you like here, if I were to go about pulling my wire, the tools in my way. Here, I'll show you. So I've got my loop is here. And now I'm going to do my wraps. And my hand is in my way. If I switch over to my chain, vent chain, you can see now all of a sudden my hand is way out over here. Yeah. And I have all this room to work. Yeah, that's great. And you may already know that, but sometimes it's it's really good seeing you do that because we've talked about how bent nose pliers get your hand out of the way, et cetera, et cetera. But that was a really good visual example. Thanks for that. And then again, I'll, I'll, the flat side goes toward the piece that's staying so that I get that nice flat end. And then again, the, I, I like the bent chain here also because it allows me to see what I'm doing mm -hmm. and just so I can tuck in that end. So I don't have anybody getting poked when they're wearing this bracelet. And it's really nice to see that wire wrapped loop attached directly to the component. So there's no jump ring involved. You've got a secure connection and you know that that charm is going to stay put. You got it. That is exactly it. You know it. Okay. So do we want to bring this in? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Are you ready for this? Okay, uh -huh. so we obviously can yes. decorate our charm bracelet with beads galore. But one of the things that I love about using the Contastic Mandrel is making charms and components with the tool. And I will bring in my favorite friend, Flatwire, because I think that is just so fun. And I think it works so well on this mandrel. So, and I'll go over the tool a little bit more. Um, but let's just get right to making this thing so you guys fall in love with it and then I'll tell you more about it. So I'm just going to wrap the flat wire around the cone. I've got a little bit of a, a handle here and I'm purposely leaving that even though it doesn't really help me in the beginning, it will be how I use um, how what I use to connect it to the bracelet. And so this is just going to make like a really cute charm. Get all the way to the end. Trim that off. And I'll do this one kind of on an angle just so I can tuck that in. And so the angle meet, meets the shape. There we go. And then I'll take my handle and make it into a loop, which this might be a little bit too long, but uh, to trim that. And I think I'll go this way. And you see, like, there's no plan. Just having fun. I love this flat wire, by the way. I'm so glad that this is getting incorporated into this project. That is so cute. Isn't it just so cute? And then you can just add it and it just adds a little something special to your design. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more about this tool. This tool is so ingenious where it has, it comes with the, 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 um, the original set is three different sizes of the cone and they all store in the bottom of the tool, which you would then, they've come out if I hadn't already taken them out. <laughs> So you have three different sizes and a wrench, which will loosen the set screw here, which is probably the wrong term, but you have. Oh, it just drops down through the middle. How about that? It, 
they're all the smallest one does. Okay, gotcha. So you have like a, a little bit of a of a set, like a set screw, but it's not really a screw. And that is what holds, you see it has like a little bit of a flat face on I see one that, side. Yeah. So you would hold that in there. The small one, I'm gonna show you probably better with the big one so that you see it doesn't all they don't all slide through. <laughs> 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 and then we'll just this will then just hold that face against that flat face of the um, shank, the shaft. Okay. And then the hole here is what you would then use to put your wire in. So you, oh, I, now you have a handle. Oh, wow. Okay. And then you just wrap around it. Yep. To make cones. Yep. And this is great for finishing cording, making, you know, making components, so many, so many different things. And it's nice because you can hold it. The other thing is that you can do is you can put it in a vise. So then I would cut that off, cut this off. So I can remove the cone. And then you have, this would be like a super great cord end for if you did some Kumi Hemo or brought multi strands together up through it. Yeah, make Just your nice own way to finish. Cones. So now, this let me show you this. Whoa, wow. <laughs> that is really cool. Isn't it cool? So here it is the base of it is the bracelet we just did. If you can, I don't know if you can make it out, but these these are all on you those. Can, you can't even see the bracelet that we just did underneath all those fabulous cones. That no. is cool. Wow, wow, that wow. Fun? That would yeah, make a yeah. really awesome statement necklace. Like I want oh, yes. of that. <laughs> a mixed metal, beautiful cones. Ah, yes. Um, and the inventor of this tool, I see that she's in the crowd, is Sandra Lupo. Oh, yes. She is really awesome. And she's super creative and just has such a spunky, fun personality. If you guys are not familiar with Sandy yet, please do with yourself a favor and go find her on Facebook. And she will be live with Jesse James Bead Celebrity Spotlight at some time in April. I think it's, yeah, April 15th. So Cone Task is coming to Jesse James. We'll have that in the one gets our next order out. This is a fun tool. I know I've seen some, some of our friends in the audience here commenting about how much they like it. And I'm just, I, we've, we've looked at it for a while, but we haven't brought it to Jesse James. And when Tammy showed me this project, I'm like, we don't have the tool here yet, but can you please just do a quick little demo of it? Because this tool is really cool and it's coming. I love it. I love it. And I love Sandra. She's a dear friend, yeah. such an amazing woman and so talented. Oh my gosh. When you, you guys, when you meet her, she, she exudes, talk about exuding talent. This woman knows everything about everything. Yeah, she is a designer and she also filled me in that she's a dancer as well. Sandra takes dance classes and does like all kinds of ballroom dancing. So we'll talk about that more come April 15th. But for now, <laughs> Tammy, let's continue almost with this project. All right. Well, so what else do we want to see? Um, let's see. Uh, maybe making the class. How about that? Yeah. Let's see. So I've used up a lot of my wire. Let me grab something else to work with this won't be the same gauge because i've used up all that i have handy but this um next component will be about five inches of wire and again it all depends on what you're looking for what what you what gauge wire you're using what tools you're using but a, a good place to start is five inches and we're going to make what my friend Connie called the swan clasp and maybe that's what it's called by everybody but i learned it from her Nobody does it as good as her either, but she's uh, amazing. All right. So just again, keeping the flush ends. I've got tools and parts everywhere. My husband wonders, so he's like, why is everything always a mess? I'm like, well, because I just keep making things. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm just trying to create. <laughs> this is what creativity looks like, can't you see? <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, all right. So I am going to just start. I'll start at the center. You could start at the center. You can start um, at the beginning, but I'll start at the center and really just want a nice, can you see? 
like a nice graceful spiral. Uh, there we go. And what I'll do is I'll come in with my flat nose pliers and just kind of help grow. You do it away from me, it's better away from you. This is a much finer gauge, so I would not recommend this for, um, you know, for a component that's going to need to hold up, but so you get the idea. So we've got a nice decorative spiral. And then what we'll do is larger bale pliers again. I'm going to come right in under that loop. Yeah, that's actually a good way to see it. Create that neck. You can see why they call it a swan clasp. Yes. So graceful. And then we'll just turn that end. And if you can trim it, you can. There's so many ways that you can personalize what you're making. There we go. Beautiful. Shape that. Now, another another thing I like to do, one, because I, I like to have the component be a little bit more structured as well as so my piece. Because um, here is where we're going to be connecting our design. I like to have that little bit of a point. And so okay. you can see that little bit of a crook here. And then this way it'll help guide your pieces to hang. Like it's it, like, so it, you know, if you were wearing this as, um, gosh, what is something that would come out of the round? You want it, you just want to have a place for it to rest. And this could work that's, for a pair of earrings. It could work for a bracelet necklace. Yeah, that's a really beautiful component. That would be very yeah. fun for a pair of earrings. Yeah, to dangle something small off of it. Yeah. Cool. And then you can hammer it as well, which also will give it a little bit of strength. Mm -hmm. Just hammering, like we're not really texturing it, just flattening it a little bit. It, it gives it a little bit more. Um, it keeps saying professional finish, but it, it makes it so the piece has more than just turning it on a pair of pliers. You've done a little bit more to it. You've made it a little bit more finished, more polished, more professional. <laughs> <laughs> Call it what it is. I love this purple, this backdrop. Yeah, it really makes it pop. Yeah. And that's the, the swan. What did you call this component? The swan clasp. The swan class. It really is the most perfect name for it, too. Isn't it? I know. I can't take credit for that. And then you just link everything together and you decorate the heck out of it. Take all your beads. Here's some quartz crystals and pearls. Wow. Some tie silver. <laughs> See, and that's so fun to be able to just design your own components and then put them all together and then just let your, let your creativity run wild. Like this is a, would be a great project to make sitting in front of the TV. Um, I just like, yes. just when you have some idle time. Well, and I will tell you when my boys were little, I took all of my wire I'd get all my wire cut. I'd have all my ends hammered and I would take this to the baseball field and I would make components while watching baseball games that's so awesome yeah hey we, you know we've got to keep our hands busy that's what we do <laughs> you said that you taught this this the first time that you taught this class let's see the bracelet one more time up close if you don't mind you got it um, you said that you taught this class for the first time at bead fest when was that Tammy? Yes. oh my gosh 2001 2002 somewhere around there but oh my gosh that oh must have been back when bead fest was at the old sheridan at no, the old we started Valley. at the valley we started out in um, Fort Washington. Yeah. There, yeah. That's where this was. We were in Fort Washington for years and then changed to Valley. Oh, gosh, we went to Reading one year. Don't let's not talk about that year. Um, and then we went to the Valley Forge. What is it? Is it the Sheridan? Is that what that was? I think Alpacino. it was. The first time that we ever did Bead Fest was like, it was in like the basement of this. Um, I'm going to put a gallery view on now. We was the okay. first time that we, um, that we ever did Bead Fest. It was in like the basement of this hotel. 
Um, and it was my first time ever at a show. We had this teeny tiny booth. I worked it with my dad. <laughs> we had like rounders set up as if it was CHA. Um, I love it. And yeah, oh my gosh, blast from the past. And then Beat Fest kept on growing and it had to yes. go to another building um, down, what is it? In, um, I forget the name of that town, but the, where, there's- Where a, we are now in Oaks? In Oaks, in Oaks, in this yeah. massive, massive convention center. And, you know, just watching like the growth of Beat Fest has been really, really cool. And it's it's a bummer that we haven't been able to be together this year, but are there are there plans for Beat Fest future? Do you know? Yeah, yeah there are plans for the future. We're, we're kind of guardedly optimistic for 2021, but 2022, we are very optimistic that everything will be fine and we will be back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Bead Fest. And really the first Bead Fest, we had 14 classes, 100 booths. And I remember the day when we opened my, the publisher at the time, he was, he didn't believe me when I told him there'd be a line out the door. He's like, I don't think anybody's coming. What are you talking about? I mean, of course he was teasing me. Um, and boy, oh boy, when at 930, when he looked out that door and he saw the line of people, he was like, oh my gosh, you were right. They really did come. And it was the most exciting day. Oh my gosh. I was on cloud nine thinking about being able to bring something to our area that made people so happy. And we brought so much talent to that room and so much fun. It was electric and it hasn't changed. It, it continues, like you said, it continues to grow and be so dynamic and filled with so many different nuances of what our community is all about, you know, from jewelry making to beading to crystals to seed beads to African trade beads to, I mean, it goes Everybody on and on. plays such an important role from all these different vendors, you know, are just from you going and like helping to create this really cool event to all of our community that comes and shows yes. up. And waits outside in line to be able to be like, you know, on the first person on the floor. <laughs> that is like everyone plays like an important role in this in this industry. And and no matter how how big the vendor may be or how small, however much like dollars you can spend, or even if you just come to be part of the community and and just share in the groove of Bead Fest and this community, everyone plays such an important role. We couldn't do we Absolutely. couldn't do it without each other. But that is the truth. It takes all of us. And we, we have so much to offer to anybody who's able to make it to the show when we have the show, um, you know, because even if, the, like you said, if, even if you don't have a budget, you, the vendors do so much education right in their booth to share with you how their products work. And you could meet Sarah right in person, right up, right, right up close and personal. <laughs> and, and Wyatt and Meredith and all of your guests. Sandra Lupo is always there. You know, I mean, it, it brings everybody to to, to write to you and we're all really just regular people so we're all happy exactly. to meet you and the thing and what we need to to really recognize with being online even though you know we're not able to be in person with these beach shows all of these industry leaders all of these designers these brands we are all so very accessible like there are some very big names in this industry there are are, are brands that are in michael's and and in the big big craft stores but still when you break it down we're all just really normal people that want to do something cool and we really love talking to our community so if you guys ever have any questions if you're interested in being part of, of a, as a contributor for Interweave or being part of Jesse James Rising Stars, reach out, take a chance, be bold, go try something new. Like we're all here because we took a chance to try something new. And I, I, in, I incite anyone that's watching right now to do the same. It feels good. Absolutely. 100%. Just, just be brave. And we're all here to catch you and help you. Yep. The net is positively unbreakable in this industry, and yep. um, and it and it feels so good to be able to form this really wonderful space with incredible people like you, Tammy. Oh well, thank you for welcoming me into your space and giving me the chance to be with you today. It's really been my pleasure. And I, my sentiments are the exact same. I have been, I have looked up to you as a role model in this industry, as a as a wonderful person and as a designer. So I've just. I'm to the moon to be able to start my Thursday here with you and to be able to share your light with Jesse James Beads. Thank you, Sarah. My pleasure. Thank you.
Um, guys, we have written instructions for this project. Tammy was so wonderful to write out the instructions. Um, all the supply list is available at Jesse James Beads. We'll be posting the instructions a little bit later today. So if you're interested in making these really cool components, let me just run it down real quick. We learned how to make connectors, uh, really thick fatty jump rings, a swan clasp, and Tammy's version of the wire wrap loop. This was, oh, and the Contastic. How could I forget? This was yeah. a really like a full spectrum tutorial of different components. Thank you, Tammy, for all of that. Oh, my pleasure, truly. Thank you. So Tammy, before we break, tell us real quick something that you're excited about that you either have going on personally in terms of design or what you are working on in terms of content contr contribution. Leave us with that. Oh my goodness. Well, we have, uh, we're, we're in production for Beadwork Magazine summer issue. Um, we have the next issue of Black Battery Journal. One just went to press. We've got the next one coming up. Um, I'm over the yarn group as well. And I'm always excited to see what those ladies are doing because, and that team is doing because they produce amazing fiber content, which I'm also a huge fiber fan and I love to knit. So they inspire me every day. Um, personally, I'm I'm embracing all of the, the, the digital technology and, you know, looking forward to getting back to teaching and finding my own groove um, and, you know, just kind of expanding a little bit more of what I do and how I'm reaching people because I miss people so much. I miss teaching so much. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, and, and life, I've got two beautiful children who keep me so busy. Um, even though they're grown, I still, you know, spend a lot of time with them and my dog. I love my dog. <laughs> He's still a puppy, so he keeps me super busy. So really there's not a free moment in my life where it's not filled with something, something beautiful. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful life. So I'm, I, I'm just grateful to wake up every day and get to do something that I love and to be surrounded by people that I enjoy spending time with and to be inspired by the people I work with. Um, it's, it's a wonderful life. Right. That's really, really beautiful, Tammy, and your dedication to this industry and making it such a wonderful space for all of us. Your contribution to that is, is so appreciated. So thank you for what you do. And I'm going to be in touch with you about some stuff with yarn. We have an, a sister company, Dress It Up Buttons, that I could, could be a very good fit for some of the things that you're doing. So we'll, we'll chat okay. off the air. Um, but for now, I just want to say thank you again for coming on and sharing this beautiful tutorial and just your ideas and mind with us. It's been a wonderful oh, morning. Thank you. Yes, what a great way to start the day. Thank you. Thank you all. Really appreciate everybody. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. You can find Tammy here on Facebook. Later today on the Beetle On channel, you'll see myself again with Wyatt White and Meredith Roddy. We have a special St. Patrick's Day edition going on over on the Beetle On channel. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then tomorrow at 3 p.m., we have a new designer, Randy Brown, doing a Facebook Live tutorial using our brand new Jesse James strands featuring Dakota Stones. And then again on Sunday featuring the same strands, you can watch Brittany Chavers at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So a lot of content happening over here. Rising Stars at Jesse James Beads will be on Monday at 4 p.m. So set your clocks, check the events page here on Facebook, and don't forget to support our other industry friends like Tammy and the gals over at Beading Daily and Interweave. Tammy, thanks so much for coming on today. This has been absolutely great. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Wonderful. Take good care. Hey, yes, you too. Thanks. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.